stay in the present, we must unlock the secrets of the past. I'm Sienna Higginbotham. Join us as we explore the mysteries of the earth, beginning now. Today we will talk about pudding stones. This is Stephen Veach, leader of the Pikes Peak Pebble Pups. Thank you, Sienna. These are some really unusual rocks. They're not minerals. This used to be an ancient beach and the waves would deposit sand and through time and water and waves coming back and forth it reduced sand grains to pure quartz. And then things quieted down at the beach and there were some heavy rains and the rains brought in these dark colored pieces called chert. The water, the river, would tumble them. That's why they're rounded and they would spread them out all over the beach. Then the water got busy again bringing more sand and covering them up making this nice material we call a pudding stone. Over time it became sandstone, turned into a rock. And then it was buried and even over some more time added to it and some pressure from rocks above it became heated and pressured, turned it into a metamorphic rock. It's called quartzite. It's almost all pure quartz except for these little nodules called pudding stones. And these were found in Michigan. How did they end up in Michigan? That's a good question. During the Great Ice Age, the last ice age, there were sheets of ice more than a mile thick that covered the northern part of North America. And these ice sheets spread out over the land, gouged down into the earth in Canada, where this is from, and broke up pieces of the pudding stone layer and carried them in to Michigan. And these were inside those big ice sheets. After the ice age and the glaciers began to melt, these were spread out all across the landscape. Then more time came and dirt covered them and then they were found by other people in modern times. That's fascinating. So how do you find pudding stones today? That's another good question and it's a really fun way to do it. It's a, a prospecting method that you use by letting farmers do all the work when they till the soil and prepare their fields. They'll go out and break up all the earth so they can put their seeds in it. And when they do this, they bring up pudding stones in Michigan and fossils that are in limestone and sometimes artifacts and other interesting rocks and minerals. In other uh, Midwestern states, you use that method of prospecting by going through fields that have been tilled and you'll find artifacts, Indian artifacts. So it's an easy way to find things. My nephew Wyatt, who lives in Michigan, uh, just a, a few weeks ago spent a half an hour with me combing through his dad's cornfields and within five minutes he found a fossil and he found several pudding stones and both of the pudding stones he found were premium ones. We can tell they're really good because they're packed full of these little chert nodules. So let's go back to this pudding stone, Sienna. This is really highly packed quartz grains. Heat and pressure has turned it in, as I said, to quartzite. It can be polished when it's put on a, a sanding wheel and the surface is ground and then polished, you can see uh, that it takes a beautiful polish. It shines and you can see the beautiful red chert. There's brown chert, black, uh, tan, all colors of chert. Again, uh, there was an ancient sand beach. And just think, big thunderstorms, powerful rains, coming down out of the highlands, bringing chert down in the river, tumbling them into these nice little round 
nodules. There's no uh, really hard or pointed uh, pieces. They're all rounded off and spread them out over the beach. The ocean covered them again with sand and then over time we get these beautiful pudding stones in Michigan. It's one of the important uh, uh, rocks that uh, gem hunters and gem collectors, rock counters, look for in Michigan.